So I decided that I'm going to redo the video I did 18 years ago about how to lay up a fiberglass tube. And this is for all you space modelers out there. Hopefully it'll be a little better quality this time. Um, I've got my supplies laid out here. I've got some uh, crown ready release getting ready to go on my mandrel. I've got some half ounce glass. This is cut so it wraps two layers around each section of the mandrel. There's nothing really magic about it. Just measure your mandrel and, and cut out a form like that. I've got my um, half mil mylar set up here to go over this section of it. Here is some Japanese tissue to go over the taper and I usually would put Japanese tissue over the motor mount section but I am going to make this into a 13 millimeter motor mount rather than the 10 and a half here by taking a piece of body tube that is 13 millimeters and sliding it up on the mandrel like that. Now I've already got my motor mount ready to go. So, to start with, I think we're going to go outside and put some mold release on. Um, you want to do this in a vented place, please just don't do it in the same room you're breathing the air in. Okay, so the object when spraying the mold release on is to get three or four really good coats without any runs or sags, kind of like you're spray painting something. So I'll stop for just a few seconds and let that flash off, and then I'll add some more. You can't really add too much unless it starts to run and sag, then you hit too much. But other than that, too little, it won't come off the mold. calling that done. We're going to mix up our epoxy. I use a West system, a 105 hardener, excuse me, 105 resin and a 206 hardener, which gives me, oh, I don't know, a good half hour of working time or more. And it doesn't take much epoxy. I usually mix up about six ounces, seven ounces. It's five to one ratio, so just follow that. And mixing it up, I just reuse these plastic cups. They probably came from, I don't know, McDonald's or whatever, they're ketchup cups. You don't have to throw them away every time you use them. You just let the epoxy that's in there harden up, and it's only a small layer. And the next day, you can still use it over and over. And actually, the same thing happens with my mixing stick. That's probably 15 years old. Alright, so we're going to transfer the epoxy to the mandrel. Basically, the idea is you want to get the epoxy and the fiberglass on the mandrel all wetted out. You can do it by putting the epoxy onto the mandrel. You can put the fiberglass onto a piece of wax paper and take a foam roller and roll out the epoxy onto the fiberglass. However you get it onto the mandrel, as long as it works for you, it's fine. Um, I like to be able to put epoxy on the mandrel and I just put on several long globby sheets of it and then I rotate the mandrel to smooth it out. And don't worry about putting too much on at this point because once we get the fiberglass on we are going to take a paper towel and blot the extra epoxy out of the fiberglass. So you can, uh, you can be generous with this and not worry about it. So I'm just spreading it out. You can put this on however you want. Uh, something to look for after you do this, by the way, sometimes these acid brushes that I'm using here will drop a bristle into your epoxy on the layup. So take a careful look make sure you don't have one of those stuck in there because they are I'll make a mess of your body right there. All right, I'm going to pause right there. All right, I'm going to pause right there. Just for file management's sake. And OK. 
Okay. All right, now we are ready to put the body on. And I strongly suggest using some kind of gloves or epoxy cream for your hands when you're doing this. Most people can get away for a long time with exposure to epoxy, but after a while your body can be sensitized to it. And I have some friends who can no longer even be in the same room with epoxy without having problems. So please take care of yourself. All right, so all we're doing now is we're putting the fiberglass onto the mandrel, draping it over some. We don't, we want, basically want to make it so I can start getting this edge around without coming all the way up onto the other glass. And I'm just going to take a finger or two and gently push down and pull just oh so gently so that the glass wants to come down onto the mandrel. Careful when you get to the edge. I'm not really pulling past the edge. I'm just kind of blotting it down. This fiberglass is such a light open weave that if you get little wrinkles and stuff in it, you can take your finger and very easily work them out. And so, oops, there we go. There's a bristle from the brush. Get that out of there. All right, so got one inch started. I'm going to come down around. Now, now I just keep working the fiberglass down. Again, it's well lubricated with the epoxy, so it moves, you know, it, it doesn't grab on the, the glove at all. And if you just do this systematically in just a minute or two, you can have the whole tube done. And as you see, as you get through the transition section, because we cut the fiberglass to fit, it actually does a pretty decent job of getting down onto the tube almost straight. But you know what? I've had this part here wrap, you know, do weird things. It doesn't make any difference as long as it's on there and as long as it's not all folded up on itself and lumpy, it's okay. All right, so now I'm going to go back and there's some dry areas. I'm just going to redistribute the epoxy a little bit to make sure that the fabric is saturated. Okay, we now have glass on the mandrel. Next step, let's get that excess epoxy off of there. In order to make a really lightweight tube, you got to pull all this extra epoxy off. If you don't do that, you've just got all those extra grams of epoxy. So. We are just taking this and squeezing gently, not, not squeezing the daylights out of it, just squeezing gently. Unroll it carefully, you don't want to mess up your lamp. Same thing on the transition. I don't take much off the transition though, because you really need to have a little extra rigidity on the transition, because there's a lot of forces going on through that area. Alright, so it looks pretty good to me. Alright, now, we need to build up the external skin from the bottom up. Um, I'm actually going to start, I'm going to put the Japanese tissue on here anyway, but I don't need to, but I'll do it anyway just so you guys can see what it looks like. So Japanese tissue has got a dull side and a shiny side. Um, I prefer shiny side out. And the reason that you want to start at the bottom is that you want your next layer to overlap over top of that and your top layer to overlap over top of that so that if you you don't have any projecting edges into the airstream. So if you just put this on it's basically one layer with some overlap and you can use your finger, back of your finger whatever, the epoxy that's on the layup will seep through the Japanese tissue and soak it out. If it doesn't soak it out because you've got a really dry layup then you can just dip into your your epoxy uh, pot there and grab a little bit more. Okay, and I'm going to put this on now. Start it in the center. Make sure that the top edge is up at the transition. You don't want it way above it. You don't want it way below it. And then I'm actually pulling it down on there and you can even see the epoxy beating up through it. Look at that. And so now that I've got it all centered and nice, then I'll just use my finger and I'm just going to push and roll 
Again, I'm trying to basically squeeze the epoxy up through the Japanese tissue to the surface, and you can tell when it's come through because it gets all nice and shiny on you. All right, and then come back the same way. Same thing. And I've got a little overlap there, not a little bit of a gap there. It'll happen occasionally. If you do, it doesn't hurt to just take a little dab of epoxy and use that to reinforce that area. If I wanted to, I could take this back off and try to reapply it, but for demo purposes, I'm just going to leave that right there. You're going to see warts and all. Okay, now for the mylar portion, the mylar is not very forgiving of any kind of imperfection underneath it. So what I do is I like to find where the outer edge of the fiberglass layout was, which is right here. And I start my wrap after that, just after that. So the last part that it hits is that, is the, is that edge. Because if it hits that edge in the middle or the beginning, sometimes that introduces a little wrinkle in the mylar. The mylar also tends to have a little curl to it. This mylar it's right now is kind of curling in this direction, so that's the direction I'm going to put it on. And basically you want to start by overlapping it maybe an eighth of an inch there, bring it straight across, I eyeball straight actually, and then I like to take a piece of paper towel, fold it up and just use that to slide on here to push it down because the rubber gloves definitely will grab that. Okay, I think my I need to move that up just a little bit. That was a little too much overlap. You can tell if you've got too much overlap because you will end up with a crinkly, you'll end up with some crinkles down at that end down there. All right. Now, use this to just slide it around. You're going back and forth. And what you're doing is you're trying to push out, and you're not pushing, I'm not pushing hard. I'm pretty pretty medium and you're trying to push this down and if you see it wrinkling try to work it out. Mylar doesn't really stretch at all so if it's wrinkling it's probably because there's something underneath it that's making it wrinkle or it's slightly misaligned and just needs to be pushed or pulled at the top or bottom. Alright, got that on? Take your brush, very small dab will do you, lift up the flap, paint on, a very thin coat of epoxy and rub that damp back down onto there. You're done. Now you have body tube, let it set overnight. I usually like to give mine 24 hours. The longer you set it, the better it will be. Definitely don't do less than what is recommended on the bottles or on your uh, epoxy. And then we're going to chuck this into an oven and heat it up to melt the wax and twist the body tube off the uh, mandrel, hopefully. That's the next step. Thanks.